right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the MCDU in the A320 flight deck. But as always, before we get started, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below, all that kind of good stuff just helps me keep this channel moving forward. So thank you so much if you've done so already for me. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and bring up the slide that we're going to talk about. So as I mentioned, the MCDUs in the A320 flight deck here, now, right off the bat, one thing that I want to tell you guys is these units in and of themselves are extremely complex. There is just a ton of detail that we could dig down and you could literally write a book on how to operate this thing, and all the different commands and all the different functionalities that it has built into it. And there is literally a book written on it, by the way. Uh, the manuals go into tremendous detail about this. So what this discussion is going to be today is not a step-by-step, -step, you know, every keystroke and every command and every little thing that we can do with this box going to be a little more general, going to be a little more high level. So I just want you to walk away with some general understanding about, you know, this the system, you know, as a whole, as opposed to, like we said, the, the fine detail, nitty gritty about how to operate it. But with that being said, if you guys have any questions about any of the commands on any of the pages or any of the buttons or any other details that you could think to ask, you know, please leave them down in the comment section there. I'll do my best to get those fielded for you. So with that being said, the, the first thing that I want to tackle is a little bit of phraseology and just some higher level understanding about how this box ties into the airplane as a whole and how the systems work together. Because it, it is funny that a lot of times the terminologies kind of get tossed back and forth. And I'm even guilty of it from time to time. You know, if you, you use different words to talk about this box and what we're doing with it. So you'll hear all sorts of different things from everything from you know, the book, you know, absolute technical finite word that this box is actually called is the MCDU or the multi-purpose control and display unit. But you also hear people talk about it, you know, the FMGS, the FMGC, the, the FMS, the box, you know, uh, any number of things are used to describe this. And it all, you know, people just know that it essentially means the same thing at the end of the day. But like I said, you know, we're all about being technical and finite here. So, I wanted to tell you, you know, that that term in specific, the MCDU, um, as the name implies, multi-purpose, it means that it's just the, the interfacing unit that we can interact with the airplane to do a whole lot more things above and beyond just what meets the eye. And I want to go into a little bit more detail, so I'll bring up a little another graphic that more specifically outlines this. There's a, there's a few things that I want to talk about before we get started. But just like I said, you know, the, the MCDU is just the, the pilot interface, you know, screen and keypad that we can use to talk to the FMGC or the flight management and guidance computer that in turn from there goes out and routes all sorts of other signals out to the airplane to get it to do certain things, specifically to the, the FCU here, the autopilot, and, you know, even above and beyond that, as I'll show you in the next slide, I mean, there's a whole lot of, you know, talking essentially the airplane is doing underneath the hood between all sorts of various systems that like we said at the end of the day it just affects the outcome of getting the airplane to do certain things that we're looking to have it to do so like we said draw that line in the sand for yourselves in your mind and, and the next slide here goes into a little bit more detail about what i'm talking about and you know, i won't read through every single thing that appears in the slide here but you know take a minute to pause the video and you can you know read about all the different like we said, the, the sensory inputs and the data inputs and the computing inputs that go into this, the FMGC. I mean, it's just, there's a tremendous amount of data transfer that's happening underneath the, the hood there, like we said. So, you know, the, the um, you know, part of the point of the slide, just, you know, if you, you get really, um, you take a closer examination of it, you know, there's, there's basically two FMGCs that are capable of doing the same things. Now, most of the time, both of them are working at the same time and they're cross-checking each other and, you know, they're, they're working in unison. They're backing one another up, of course, in the whole spirit of everything aviation. You know, it's all about redundancy. So, you know, with this being such an important part on the airplane, it makes a lot of sense about why it's backed up in such, a, in such a sense. And, you know, also one thing that's interesting, too, is that, you know, if we go back, let's look at this other picture once again here. Um, you know... You essentially, you know, most of the time when the airplane is operating normally, MCDU and M, or excuse me, MCDU one and MCDU two are both talking directly to FMGC one and FMGC two. But at any point in time, you can actually use either of the MCDUs to control the offside FMGC if there was to be some sort of failure, or you could use them independently 
you know, you can draw a line in the in the system there, and you know, if for whatever reason you needed to, you know, isolate one side of the system, uh, you could do so. So, like I said, this this circles back and ties into that concept that I threw at you early on, where this the MCDU is a multi-purpose unit. Can, it can really do a lot of different talking with different things in the airplane, and you know, that's probably about all that you really need to know as far as, you know, that that concept is is uh, considered uh, in general, but just hopefully that sheds a little bit more detail about what's going on. But one thing also, you know, to, to talk about, you know, in, in normal circumstances, these MCDUs on the captain and the FO side, they're basically mimicking each other. So you, what's happening on your side of the computing power is, uh, mirrored, let's say, about, you know, as to the captain's side. So you can both make inputs and, you know, what's the captain makes an input on his side is going to be reflected in your side. So you're always, you're working as a team, of course, and think of it like you're using the same computer. You're just using a different screen and a different keyboard to talk to the same, same components underneath the hood. Once again, under normal circumstances to get the airplane to do what you need it to do. So like I said, pretty much all that I wanted to talk about with that concept in general there. But, you know, coming back, I mean, just once again, talking about high level stuff about what this MCDU does for us, this is really one of the places in the flight deck. I'd, I'd venture to say, you know, from a statistical time standpoint, the, the place where our fingers spend the most amount of, you know, time essentially manipulating this specifically in the airplane in any given flight. I mean, there's just so much things that happen in this MCDU area here, you know, everything from like planning the flight, navigation, fuel planning, communications with dispatch, communications with our load planners, communications with aircraft control, uh, getting weather, all sorts of different things happen. So we, like I said, we're just, we're spending so much time in this box specifically during our day to day, every you know basic thing that we're doing. So it's just a, a, a tremendous amount of um, let's say focus that you know this box specifically gets um, during any day-to-day -day operation. So I, I think you get the point there. And you know, with all that being said, you know, it's just it's amazing where we've come in aviation. That you know, we would really be lost if we ever lost, you know, both of these boxes at the same time. It would be such a an unlikely scenario that something like this would happen. But uh, you could imagine, you know, just how hard it would be to fly our Airbus around if we didn't have one of these boxes to utilize. I mean, it would. I don't want to say it would be impossible, but you, you certainly couldn't, you know, conduct normal routine flight operations very efficiently if you didn't have these marvels of technology available to you. So it's just, it's one of those things that once you get used to using it, I mean, the thought of not having it is, is just, it, it almost doesn't compute in your brain as far as it goes to operating one of these big complex aircraft. So last thing I want to tell you guys about is just a little bit of phraseology about the buttons and how we interact with this specifically. A lot of times when you read manuals, they'll, they'll talk about the, the LSKs. That just means the line select keys. So we have LSKs on the left-hand side and LSKs on the right-hand side. The other big one that's talked about you know, is this little area here. We call it a scratch pad. So we'll use the, the keypad here to make entries into the scratch pad. And then we'll use the line select keys to drop those entries into whatever line we need to to drop them into and of course there's just a you know a ton of different data fields and all those you know, different sorts of things that we're making entries for you know during our, our given day-to-day -day flight um, you know conducting a flight let's say so uh, like I said just some some very basic level things I wanted to tell you about and then you know we ha we have these different menus also that you could step through and then with e within each of the menus there is oftentimes multiple pages and that's evidenced by the little arrows up here you know sometimes you'll see a left or right ability to scroll through the pages sometimes there's an up and down kind of thing and you would use these buttons here to navigate as such so that is pretty much all the high level stuff I could think to tell you guys about. As I said, if you have more questions, please leave them down in the comment section there down below. and We'll do the best to get those answered for you. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye.